welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and world enchantments are fantastic in Commander. I have mentioned a few of them on my 10 cards video already. I pretty much covered most of them because I find that world enchantments in general work really good in the Commander format because they are affecting the entire table, usually in a very significant way. And I figured at some point I would probably just talk about all of the world enchantments. So that's what this video is going to be. This video is going to be about all the world enchantments that are available. So first of all, I got to talk about what the heck is a world enchantment for all newer players, because of course, world enchantments have been around for a long time time world is a super type that is only found on enchantments the last set they were seen in was visions so of course that was a long long time ago even before i started playing the game i actually think they're really interesting you know it, the reason they dropped them it, i guess they weren't great maybe in a two-player game i think world enchantments are way more interesting in a four-player format so how does a world enchantment work any different than a normal enchantment the specific rule with world enchantments sort of works like legendary except even more extreme where you can only have one world enchantment in play at a time i think most people probably don't know this and i think it's entirely likely that there has been several situations where someone plays a world enchantment and there are a couple world enchantments that are fairly popular in the format and then someone else plays a world enchantment and they have no idea that both can't exist in the same time and i'm not talking about two world enchantments with the same name you can't have another world enchantment period if I have a world enchantment in play, completely different name, completely different color, everything, and then my opponent plays a world enchantment, mine gets destroyed. The most recent one is the one that gets to stick around. Any other world enchantment that might be in play will get removed. So, of course, that is very significant. Unfortunately, again, because they're old cards, a lot of them can also be pretty expensive. That's a bit of a drawback, but I'm going to cover them all here. There are 26, and hopefully you guys can find out some interesting ones that will work for you. So we are starting out with Arborea. Two green green. World enchantment, of course. Creatures can't attack a player who didn't cast a spell and didn't put a card onto the battlefield during their last turn. Very interesting card. So any creature can't attack. And of course, with most world enchantments, it's going to affect all players evenly. These are all very symmetrical effects. So playing a land, right? If you just play a land, that's good enough. It's an interesting one. Next up, we got Bazaar of Wonders. Three blue blue, when Bazaar of Wonders enters the battlefield, exile all graveyards. So, you know, it's graveyard hate and blue. That's pretty interesting. Also though, whenever a player casts a spell, counter it if a card with the same name is in a graveyard or a non-token permanent with the same name is on the battlefield. So obviously that doesn't work so well in Commander because we can't do the same name thing there as much. I suppose if your opponents are playing the same cards as you, it will work. So if you have a soul ring going to your graveyard, now your opponents can't play soul rings right so it does actually work a little bit there however where i thought this one was really good i just mentioned this in my 10 deck ideas video spy kit works phenomenally here where you can put a spy kit on any creature of yours and now essentially your opponents can't play non-legendary creatures pretty neat combo there with this one next up we have caverns of despair two red red world enchantment no more than two creatures can attack each combat no more than two creatures can block each combat so very usable ability again this is is one that you have other effects like this in this color maybe other colors there are certain effects that sort of already fit into this theme this is another option for you it's just going to limit the amount of creatures that are able to attack if you want to do that in a red deck whatever the reason might be maybe you're in that you're real the mist stalker voltron strategy where you don't want anyone to be using a go wide strategy because you don't want to be doing it can work great there so there's another option if you're looking for it next up we got chaos sphere two in a red world enchantment Creatures with flying can block only creatures with flying. Also, creatures without flying have reach. So this is essentially a flying creatures hate card. Because now if you have a low to the ground team, like if you're in a Cranko deck, and this is a very usable card in a deck like that, flying creatures can't block your creatures, right? Because flying creatures can only block creatures with flying. If you're in a deck where you don't have any flying creatures, this isn't going to hurt you at all. It's only going to hurt your opponents. And creatures 
without flying have reach. So now your goblin token can block that giant dragon. If you have a guy in your playgroup that likes to play that dragon tribal deck, also the art on this card is phenomenal. I've so many times wanted to throw this card in a deck because I just love the way it looks. So if you're in a deck that's low to the ground and don't have any flying creatures, this is just all upside for you. Next up, we got Concordant Crossroads, and this is probably the most infamous one. I think a lot of people are aware of this because it, one green mana world enchantment, all creatures have haste. So it is a green card that is giving haste, which of course you do not see ever. I, I think this is the only one. I guess Instill Energy will let you attack as though you had haste. Like the haste thing actually was a little bit more of a green thing back in the day. And then they sort of made it exclusively a red thing. This one is obviously expensive because it is very sought after. A lot of people are in those mono green like Selvala decks and stuff or Yisan, very high powered decks where they want to tap their commander right away and use its ability right away. So this card goes in a lot of decks. I think this card is quite well known already. However, what people might not know about it is now I can play my Chaos Sphere and I'll destroy their Concordant Crossroads, right? So now you guys know you can do that if your opponent has one of these in their decks. Next up, we got Elkin Lair, and I got a couple in a row here that I've already mentioned on my 10 cards videos because I think they're pretty good. This one's three and a red, and at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player exiles a card at random from their hand. That player may play that card this turn. At the beginning of your next end step, if the player hasn't played the card, put it into their graveyard. Yard. I really like this card. I think it'd go on a bunch of decks. Obviously, that Prosper deck where you want to be playing stuff from Exile, this is just great. And I know there's a lot of things out there that can do the impulse draw, play stuff from Exile, but where I like this one is it is exiling a card from your hand. So if your opponents aren't in that theme, now they just have to exile a card at random from their hand, and now they have to play it on their turn. And if they can't, it's just gone. They've essentially just exiled a card from their hand for nothing. And if they're in a, like, counter spell control theme... Maybe they're going to exile a counterspell from their hand that, of course, they won't be able to play on their turn. So that's just gone. So this is a, a card that if you can use it to your advantage in your deck, it's going to be probably hurting your opponents a lot and going to be advantaging you as well. I really like this one in a lot of different decks. Next up, we got Aya Singularity, another one that I think is pretty darn good, even though on its face doesn't seem so. because It's doing the same name thing again. So three in a white world enchantment. When Aya Singularity enters the battlefield, destroy each each permanent with the same name as another permanent, except for basic lands, they can't be regenerated. So again, the same name thing, you're thinking, okay, well, how often is that going to happen? Works really good against tokens, right? Especially something like those treasure tokens, a lot of that flying around in the format. And it doesn't matter if which player it is, right? If you have three different opponents and one's got a smothering tie, the one's got a dockside extortionist and one's got that prosper deck, now you can play your Aya Singularity. It will destroy all of their treasure tokens. And whenever a permanent other than a basic land enters the battlefield destroy all other permanents with that name they can't be regenerated so now only one treasure token can exist in play at a time every time a new treasure token enters the battlefield it will destroy all the other ones so it's really going to hose any strategy like that any token strategy like maybe a tana deck or something or a sapperling deck when those tokens etb they have the same name as those other permanents and they will destroy the other ones a zombie deck you know something like that would be really good against and the interesting thing is here it doesn't have to be the exact same card just the same name so any zombie token even if it's not the exact same zombie they'll all be destroying each other next up we got field of dreams one blue mana world enchantment players play with the top card of their libraries revealed so a lot of different ways you can use that obviously you know if, if you're in maybe that lantern of insight strategy this is another option for you right a lot of people probably don't know there are other options for this maybe you want to see what's on top of your opponent's libraries for whatever reason you see what they're drawing maybe you want to see what's on top of your library there are some strategies that want to use a card like this next up we got forsaken waste two in a black world enchantment players can't gain life so that's probably a card that you want to fit in a few strategies at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player or loses one life again not bad if you're in that group slug deck or that life loss strategy this can work good when forsaken waste becomes the target of a spell that spells controller loses five life so if your opponents try to destroy this they're going to lose five life so that's kind of a nice added bonus as well just one of those cards that's good you don't want your opponents to be gaining life if you're sort of in that life drain strategy and then also will add a little bit of life drain on top of it could work great there 
Next up, we got Gravity Sphere. Two in a red world enchantment. All creatures lose flying. So again, more red hating on those flying creatures. This just makes sure all creatures lose flying. So again, if you find that you're in your goblin deck and you're going up against your buddy who has that big, beefy flying creature deck, you know, the dragons or angels or whatever, this could be a card you might want to throw in there if you got the money, I guess, to really slow them down. Another one I mentioned in my 10 cards video, Hall of Gemstone, and a one that is maybe one of the more well-known ones. One green green world enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses a color until end of turn. The lands tap for mana produce mana of the chosen color instead of any other color. Man, that, that can be so good. Like if you're in a mono green deck, it's not going to hurt you at all. You just choose green. And then on your turn, lands only tap for green mana. And as has been pointed out in when I did this on my 10 cards video, all lands only tap for green. Even your opponent's lands are only going to tap for green on your turn. So that means that counterspell is probably not going to work, right? There's not a lot of green counterspells out there. So now on your turn, not only are you not getting hurt by this, but your opponents probably won't be able to counter any of your stuff. And then on their turn, if they're playing a three or four color deck, they're going to have to pick one color that their lands are going to tap for. So this card can be really fantastic and a lot of strategies. Next up, we got In the Eye of Chaos. Very interesting one. Two and a blue world enchantment. Whenever a player casts an instant spell, counter it unless that player pays X where X is its mana value. So this is a really interesting one and mostly interesting because... In a blue deck, you're probably going to be playing lots of instants. So why would you want this, right? Well, if you happen to be in that blue deck that isn't doing that, I have a Rain Academy Chancellor deck where it's a bit of an enchantment theme and I'm not playing a ton of instants. Could be good there. You know, it's a tough one. These universal effects can sometimes be tough to build around. I think it's particularly good in a Tigum deck where your instants can't be countered. So it doesn't hurt you at all, right? The wording is really important here. Tigum says that your instance can't be countered and in the Eye of Chaos says when an instant spell is cast, counter it unless that player pays X. So you don't pay the X. In the Eye of Chaos will counter your instant spell, but Tigum won't allow that to happen. So in a Tigum deck, this actually doesn't hurt you at all. So I think it's a fantastic fit in there if you have that deck. Next up, we got Koskin Falls. Two black, black world enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Koskin Falls unless you tap an untapped creature you control. Creatures can attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control. That's a Attacking you. I just think this is a great card. This is another one I mentioned in my 10 cards video. It's a black ghostly prison. The only downside is you got to tap that creature you control, which if you're in that King Macar deck is only upside, right? I think this is an auto include in a King Macar deck because you want to be tapping your commander and this is an easy way to do it. It's really not that hard at all. You know, just having a creature to tap down to keep this on the battlefield shouldn't be that difficult. So really not much of a downside and it is a pillow 40 effect in black, which you don't actually see that often. So this is a card that I definitely think people might want to be putting in some of their decks. Next up, we got Land's Edge, one red, red world enchant. Discard a card. If the discarded card was a land card, Land's Edge deals two damage to target player or planeswalker. Any player may activate this ability. So this is a seismic assault, but for everybody, essentially. It's a little bit different. Obviously, the wording's a little different, but if you're in that seismic assault deck, if you're in that lands deck in red where you want to maybe discard your lands, that Borborygmos deck, this could be a great fit. Of course, the only stipulation is here that everyone gets to use it. Now, is everyone going to be having lots of lands in their hand that they can be discarding, right? Is their deck going to be engineered to be discarding lands to deal damage? Probably not. So they're not nearly going to take advantage of it as much as you are. So it is another option there if you're looking for that. Also, another important wording here is you just discard a card. It doesn't have to be a land card. So you can just use this as a discard outlet as well. Maybe you're in that Asmi deck and you're looking for a free discard outlet. If it's a land, you deal two damage. If it's not a land... You just get to discard something so that maybe you can cast your commander. So it's also worth consideration there. Next up, we got Living Plane. And again, this is sort of an infamous one that a lot of people are aware of. Two green, green world enchantment. All lands are 1-1 one, one creatures that are still lands. So, of course, the reason that is significant is because you can turn your opponent's creatures into lands and then kill them with something. And Elish Norn is the typical combo here. This actually gets used in CEDH quite a bit where your opponent's lands just can't even exist at all, right? Because, of course, as soon as they hit the battlefield, they're immediately creatures that immediately die, so you don't even have an opportunity to top them for mana. It just completely locks your opponents out of having lands in play. 
There's a billion other ways to do it, I'm sure. There's a bunch of shenanigans you can get into here, obviously, by turning your opponent's lands or your lands into creatures, right? Again, this is a universal effect. Another card that is fairly well known, and of course, for that reason, is incredibly expensive. A lot of these cards are expensive for, you know, again, the reason that a lot of them are old and have never been reprinted, but also because they are some really powerful effects that get used in a lot of different situations. Next up, we got Mystic Decree, a thankfully inexpensive one because I recently just put this in a deck. Two blue, blue world enchantment. All creatures lose flying and island walk. Another effect that typically in blue you don't want to see because you probably have flying creatures and you probably have island walk creatures, but in my Abishon deck is a perfect fit. I'm actually embarrassed I never put this in there before because I don't deal with flying creatures great. Abishon taps all non-flying creatures and I had a patron suggest this to me and I was like, yes, perfect fit because sometimes I can struggle with those flying creatures and I basically want to tap down all creatures in that deck. So if all creatures lose flying, then my commander's ability becomes three blue tap all creatures, which is what I want, right? So perfect fit in that deck. Maybe there's some other decks out there where you want this as well. It is a pretty powerful effect. Just all creatures losing flying and island walk. We are moving on to one of the most powerful ones on this list, one of the most infamous ones on this list, and probably the most expensive one on this list, which is Nether Void, three and a black, world enchantment. Whenever a player casts a spell, counter it, unless that player pays three. So essentially every single spell is gonna cost three more. It is one of the most infamous Staxi cards out there. Obviously an incredibly powerful effect. Probably not gonna play this in a casual commander game, I don't think. Uh, it's really expensive card, so might not play in a commander game at all, but it is really good at what it's doing, so there it is. Next up, we got Null Chamber, another card I mentioned in my 10 cards videos, three and a white world enchantment as null chamber enters the battlefield you and an opponent each choose a card name other than a basic land card spells with the chosen name can't be cast and lands with the chosen name can't be played really interesting card and what i'm starting to realize about these world enchantments is a lot of them have very staxy effects right that prevent people from doing things this is certainly one of them and this is a card that has been played a relative amount in commander games i've seen it a few times and it's a very politics card right because what you can do is you're going to play this you're going to choose an opponent it's a little bit of a team up here right because obviously you can name people's commanders with this so if you're at a table and maybe two players have really powerful commanders you can play this sort of make a deal with the other guy and he can pick one of those guys commanders and you can pick the other one and neither of those people can play their commanders until this comes off the table so it can be really good there you can also pick lands you know maybe everyone in your play group likes to throw Gaia's cradles in their decks you you can just put this in your deck because you're sick and tired of it and you just want to name Gaia's Cradle with this. Now they can't play a land with that name. So there is a lot of different ways you can use this card. It's pretty interesting. Next up, we got Pillar Tombs of Aku. This is probably, I would say, the most useless one in a commander game. Maybe someone can find a use for it, though. Two black, black world enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep. That player may sacrifice a creature. If that player doesn't, they lose five life and you sacrifice Pillar Tombs of Aku. So this was all sounding really good until that very last part, right? So basically, you're going to play this and the very next player's turn, the next opponent is going to either sacrifice a creature if they want to, but if they don't want to, they're just going to choose to lose five life and then you have to get rid of your Pillar Tombs of Aku. So basically this is four mana. The next opponent in turn order loses five life, which is not very good. It's even worse because if your opponent wants to sacrifice a creature, now you're giving them that option as well. So I don't know. Is there a situation where this could be good? Perhaps. I, I think this is definitely the least effective one of the whole group. Next up, we have Revelation. One green mana world enchantment. Players play with their hands revealed. And again, this is an effect that we've seen a few times on cards, not in green though. This is very unique in, in green, you know. Back in the day, the color pie was a little jumbled up. They weren't sure which directions they were going to go with each color. And green had a lot of things that you typically don't see in green, like giving creatures haste or players playing with their hands revealed. So if you're looking for another effect doing that, this is one for you. Next up, we got Sarah Aviary, three and a white world enchantment. Creatures with flying get plus one, plus one. 
Okay, and again, this is a universal effect, so it's going to give even your opponent's creatures with flying plus one, plus one, but it is a mono white effect that's going to give a bump to your birds. So obviously, blue has a lot of that effect, but if you're in a flying theme and not have access to blue, this could be really good for you. If you're in a mono white bird tribal deck or something like that, this is an option for you if you're looking for one. Next up, we got Storm World. One red man out, world enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Storm World deals X damage to that player where X is four minus the number of cards in their hand. Again, a very off-color theme here. We have a red card that is sort of dealing with cards in hand, which can be significant, right? If you're in this sort of theme where you don't typically have like black is usually dealing with that kind of stuff. So if you're not in black, this is an option for you, right? You, you're in a red theme where you want people to have less cards in hand. You don't typically see that. It's four minus the number of cards in their hand. So if they have lots of cards in hand, they're not going to be taking any damage. If they have no cards in hand, they're going to be taking four damage. So very fringe, unique strategy here, probably. But if you happen to be in that deck, there's an option for you. Next up, we got Teferi's Realm. One blue, blue world enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses artifact, creature, land, or non-aura enchantment. All non-token permanents of that type phase out. This is a very interesting one. I've considered putting this in a few decks. There's a lot of different ways to use it. Okay, so first of all, again, because it is a universal effect, it might force your opponents to make some hard choices, right? If they have artifacts, creatures, lands and non or enchantments in play they'll have to pick one that will phase out and that could be tough for them they're probably not going to choose their lands and they're probably not going to choose their creatures so it's either going to be their artifacts or enchantments that phase out that could be a tough decision so that could be good there also could be extra good for you if you want to phase something out so there is a way to get advantage out of this and also sort of hose your opponents as well pretty interesting card Next up, The Abyss, another really powerful one and a really expensive one. This is actually the most expensive on the list, so I don't know if you necessarily want to run out and buy it, but it is pretty powerful. Three and a black world enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of their choice. It can't be regenerated. So on everyone's upkeep, they're going to have a creature destroyed. There's a lot of ways to use this card. First of all, it's non-artifact, so if you're in an artifact theme, it's going to save your creatures. They get to choose... I mean, okay, but they still are going to be losing a creature every turn. If you're in a strategy where you don't mind your creatures getting destroyed, maybe an aristocrats type theme, it'll work great there. And if you don't have 12 or 1300 bucks lying around, you can also use Magus of the Abyss. That's why I love these Magus cards. This was a reprint of the Abyss where you're getting that same effect, except it's stapled on a creature. It has the exact same wording on the card. The only difference here is that, of course, Magus of the Abyss is a creature, so it will destroy itself. Right, It is a non-artifact creature, so it doesn't make it quite as good. But if you don't want to run out and buy the Abyss, Magus of the Abyss is a different option for you. Next up, one of my favorites, Tombstone Stairwell. Two black, black world enchantment. Has cumulative upkeep, one and a black. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if Tombstone Stairwell is on the battlefield, each player creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token with haste named Tomb Spawn for each creature card in their graveyard. At the beginning of each end step or when Tombstone Stairwell leaves the battlefield, destroy all tokens created with Tombstone Stairwell. They can't be regenerated. So another one I mentioned in my 10 cards videos because it is doing so much. There's a lot of different ways to use this card. I won't get into all of them. You can go watch that 10 cards video where I talk about this at length. Where I think this is particularly good though is first of all, if you have a ton of creatures in your grave, yard and your opponents don't you're going to be getting way more zombies than they are right because you're getting zombies equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard but where i think this is particularly good is if you want dies triggers those tokens are getting destroyed at the beginning of every end step and everyone's getting them on every single turn so in like an alenda deck for example where you just want creatures to be dying all the time just on one turn cycle after you play this every player is going to create those tokens they're all going to get destroyed your alenda will get a ton of counters on it and then the next turn and then the next turn and by the time you get around to your turn you're Alenda will probably be able to one-shot somebody. It's going to be so big. It's really, really good. I think the best fit for it is in a deck where you want to be destroying creatures or having creatures die all the time. And finally, Winter's Night, the last world enchantment on this list today, and the only multicolored one, interestingly enough. All the rest are monocolored. This is a Naya world enchantment, red, green, and a white. 
Whenever a player taps a snow land for mana, that player adds one mana of that type that land produced. That land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So very interesting card. I mean, I don't know where you would use this. I guess you would have to be in a Naya colored deck that is using snow lands, but you're also sort of hating on snow lands, right? Because they don't untap during their next untap step. So maybe you're in a Naya deck with snow lands where you also have like a Seedborn Muse that's untapping all your stuff. I, I don't know. This is a really interesting one for sure. Maybe you want to hate on Snowlands. Maybe you're in a deck where you want to be hugging and I don't know. This is a weird one. It really is. Because you're increasing the amount of mana, but also making those lands stay tapped down, it is very unique. And obviously the Snowland thing as well in Naya Colors, that alone is very unique. So very unique, weird card. A lot of these are, of course. But that is it. That is all the world enchantments in the entire game, which of course all are available in the format. They're all very interesting and unique. Because we're in a four player format and you are affecting all the players, a lot of these can be really, really impactful in a commander game. So there they are for you guys to give consideration to. I know a lot of them are expensive, but if you're actually thinking of purchasing any of these cards, I have a TCG player link. Feel free to give it a click if you wanna buy a $1,200 Abyss card or an $800 Nether Void. It helps support the channel, but that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.